Hey everyone, and welcome to the Writer's Mind Podcast, episode 39. I hope you guys are doing well. If you want to listen to episode 40, uh, you can listen to that right now on patreon.com slash the writer's mind along with all the other even episodes. So we are back with the regular podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed the writer interviews that I did the last couple weeks. Super cool talking to those guys. Um, yeah, I, I, I really wanted to get into not just their navigation of the film industry and these sorts of things, but actually who they are as people and why they wanted to write and why they think it's valuable, you know, because ultimately we need to get away from being constantly obsessed with the industry and being constantly obsessed with just agents and managers and selling and pitching and all of these sorts of things. You know, at some point we have to stop and think about, what it is we're writing about, right? And if we never do that, and if we never see that from professional writers, then it can get discouraging and it can make it seem like all you need to be always focusing on is agents and managers and what to do in a room. And while all of this is important, it is secondary to the reason you want to write at all and why writing well matters. So, I hope you enjoyed that one uh, or those couple podcasts. And today what I want to talk about is freedom. What is freedom and how do you actually be free? I was thinking about this a lot this week because there is the freedom in the sense of you can do what you want. There's freedom in the sense of political or government-based freedom. You know, they, people talk about America as being, you know, a free country that's kind of the joke, right? It's a free country, this sort of thing. Um, but, you know, there's other nations that have all sorts of freedoms and are also free countries. Um, but really, when you get down to it, like, what is freedom and how does it actually work? And how can you recognize it? Because there's a lot of times where on paper or theoretically you are free, but you don't feel free right? There's always, it always seems like there's things to be done that you have no control over. It always feels like there are obligations that you have and it seems like you don't have freedom. Now on the opposite side of that, there is the idea that freedom equals doing everything you want in the sense of just doing nothing. And there is a certain level of freedom in doing nothing, absolutely. But I don't think the goal of freedom is to do nothing, right? I think it's somewhere in between having responsibilities and uh, doing absolutely nothing with our time, I think there is true freedom. And so I was thinking a lot about this this week, and I think a lot of freedom has to come, it comes down to not really your external situations. It can to a certain level. If you're in prison, you're not free and there's really not a ton you can do to be free. But there is a level of freedom in the sense of trying to understand that you as an individual person and your view of the world and the actions that you take define what freedom is and define your mental state. So, What I'm talking about here is freedom, I think, ultimately is a state of mind, and it's hard to grasp onto that because it's hard to define what freedom actually is from an internal perspective because a lot of our definitions of freedom are external-based, right? Like I talked about government freedom or job freedom, right? Uh, There's financial freedom, and those are elements of freedom, Um, but there is an internal element of freedom. There's a lot of people that have made millions and millions of dollars that don't feel free, right? They feel trapped in whatever business or job that they have. They feel trapped maybe in a social circle or a cultural circle because that happens too. You can be trapped in the society you're in and you feel like this isn't the place you want to be. These are the people you want to be 
be with there. And that goes into, you can feel trapped in a relationship. There's all these different ways to be trapped. And I was thinking about this and what I wrote down is I think that freedom is living in the present and being happy with what you're doing and in control of what you're doing with a clear understanding of what you want the future to be like and how you will shape it. So I'll say it one more time. Freedom is living in the present and being happy with what you're doing now and in control of what you're doing now with a clear understanding of what you want the future to be like and how you will shape it. So I think that freedom has nothing to do with whether or not you have a job or whether or not you live in a particular nation. I think a lot of it comes down to do you feel in control of what you're doing now? Are the things that you're doing now something that you in the present feel fulfilled doing, feel that are valuable, feel are important and will be important in the future? And do you have a clear understanding of what you want your future to be like and are you moving in that direction, right? So I think freedom is very active in that sense. Now, I think what happens, and this is what I do all of the time, is I get into this state where I'm thinking about when I'm going to be free. I'm thinking about when in the future things will be how I want them to be, things will be different, this sort of thing. And I neglect to enjoy the present moment, right? So because I'm thinking, oh, this external metric, this external metric, this external metric, these things will mean that I have freedom, then I don't feel gratitude and I'm not aware of the freedom that I currently possess, right? And so I think um, the lighting's cha- changing on me right now. It's the morning. It's it's early morning if you're watching on the video. Anyways, so this is what trips me up constantly, right? It's this element of I get into this zone where I am a slave to the future, So I think a lot of people have the opposite problem where they are constantly a slave to the present moment. So they have no discipline. They have no clear direction that they're heading. And then what this does is it means that all they do is just sort of impulsively move through the present, kind of whatever they feel is the right thing to do at the moment. And they don't actually progress. And so then they feel anxiety and they feel trapped because their life isn't going the direction they want it to. They feel trapped in the present and it's because they have no understanding of the future. But you can have a clear understanding of the future and still feel trapped because you're trapping yourself by wanting the future to be... like The only way that you feel free is by the future coming to pass versus saying, okay, there is freedom and where I'm at now. And the fact that I even have a clear path and goal and understanding of where I want to go is an element of my current freedom in this moment. And so I think that's something that I consistently struggle with. When I was reading Way of the Superior Man, and I was talking about that book on this podcast, that was a big impact on me because one of the things that he said was, stop waiting for your life to change. Like what your life is will always be what your life is. And when you accept that, you can find freedom. And that really hit me because that is exactly what I do constantly. I'm always looking, oh, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, things will be how I want them to be. And that's when I'll be free. But it just isn't the case. And I think over time, I find myself looking back and I say, oh man, you know, a couple of years ago, that was such a great time. Like, I wish I would have been more grateful for that stage of life when I was actually in it. And that's actually something that I felt with college a lot because in college I was writing constantly. I was constantly making YouTube videos every day, like was just I was working on something, working on something, working on something, working on something constantly. And a lot of that I'm very grateful for because it built and helped me get to where I am now. However, there were also moments where I should have taken some breaths and been grateful that, hey, like this is, I have great people around me. I'm in a great place. I need to be 
free in that present just as I am striving to do something else because I think you want to be in that zone constantly the idea that some like I, it's important to never release the future and say oh I'm not going to plan for the future or anything like that I I personally don't think that is good I think having a clarity on what do you want what do you want your future to look like I think that's super important but all within the framework of gratitude and enjoying where you are now. And if you're not in a place that you can legitimately enjoy, then that's okay. But what you have to realize is you're not free now and you need to gain clarity on where you're going and that will help you head in that direction. And then what will happen is, which this is what happened to me when I felt like I wasn't free and I didn't have um, a path to move forward, I felt very trapped and I didn't know what to do. And that's kind of what caused my kind of existential crisis on what do I really want? Where am I really going? And what happened was I got into the zone of constantly thinking about, okay, getting to the future, getting to the future, getting to the future, getting to the future. And I just formed this habit in my mind that I am looking towards the future. Right now is not what I want, and I'm looking towards the future. But over time, when that changed, when I actually gained some ground, I gained some progress, that habit was still grooved into my mind. I hadn't switched out of that to say, okay, I can actually enjoy the present moment right now. And so now I'm in a zone of trying to take that part of my brain, that part of my habits, and shift it over and say, hey, this future goals, these, this, this desire, this striving towards the future is valuable and I shouldn't stop doing that, but it should come within the view of now is good. It is good to be where I am now. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying where I am now and I can take these things in stages over time and I don't have to constantly be freaking out about the next stage. Um, this is a quote by Nassim Taleb. He wrote this book right here, Anti-Fragile, and um, he's done a lot of different stuff. Nassim Taleb is his name if you want to look him up. I think I've talked about him before on this podcast. But he says, by setting oneself totally free of constraints, free of thoughts, free of this debilitating activity called work, free of efforts, elements hidden in the texture of reality start staring at you. Then mysteries that you never thought existed emerge in front of your eyes. So this is him essentially saying, when you allow yourself to be free of all the nonsense that you put in your way, then you are able to spend some time and figure out what you actually want and understand what is valuable in your life. And um, there's another quote by him that I really, really like. I also put it here. Um, it says, you become free when there is no distinction between journey and destination. And I think that is the most simple way to describe this idea that I was talking about initially when I said freedom is living in the present and being happy with what you're doing and in control of what you're doing with a clear understanding of what you want the future to be like and how you will shape it. He has that thought, but in way better words, which is just you become free when there is no distinction between journey and destination. So you're heading somewhere, you have the destination, but the journey is part of that and you're not pushing away the journey to say, okay, I must be here. I'm not satisfied until I'm right here. Because I think what happens, and this is what I have gotten into the cycle of, is that the second you hit a milestone, all you're thinking about is the next milestone and the next thing to do, right? And so these this idea that your life is stagnant or your life is just checking off this list of goals that you have right now arbitrarily, it just isn't the case. There's always going to be something else you're trying to do or some new thing you're trying to do, some new place you're trying to go, people you're trying to talk to. It never ends. And so it's that's not a bad thing, but what is a bad thing is trying to live off of that box checking rather than saying, okay, 
I am just living life with this clarity of where I'm going. And there are different stages and different destinations throughout that. And I'm going to enjoy and be present in each of those. So another thing I noticed recently, I was thinking about this specifically yesterday, is that there is an anxiety in the freedom to do anything you want. So for me, um, you know, I don't have a boss currently. Um, you know, I've been able to do YouTube and, and build this brand and, and teach people on my website and help people finish screenplays and these sorts of things. And I don't have a boss, right? And this is great. You know, it's something I really enjoy not having a boss, being my own boss, being able to, to write and to make videos on things I'm interested in and to help other writers. I love this. Um, but there is an anxiety in this idea that my days become my own, right? So nobody is standing behind me telling me to do these things. And what this does is one, it allows me to decide what I'm going to do, but the responsibility about what I'm going to do on a given day is all on me. So it's a free, I think freedom, a lot of it comes down to your ability to take responsibility for yourself, right? So as long as you are taking direction from others, you're not really free in my view. As long as you are being told what to do by people you would prefer not to be in submission to, then you're not really free. Now, there are people, I have mentors and I have people that help me and people I listen to and people that tell me to do certain things that I do, but that's different because those are people I have chosen and said, this is someone that is going to help me, someone that is going to be of benefit to me, not somebody that is a manager at a place because I work there and I need a paycheck, right? And that's those are two different things. And so um, I think that when you gain that freedom to do what you want with your own time, a lot of that is about your responsibility and your understanding of what to actually do in this time. And I think that if you want to gain more of that freedom, it comes down to understanding that responsibility before you get the freedom, right? So you can't get the freedom and then learn the responsibility on how to handle your time. You must get the responsibility on how to handle your time as an individual first, and then that sets you up to slowly move into a new state of freedom, right? Because as long as you are off, as long as you are outsourcing your responsibility and your decision-making to other people, you're not free and you don't have the responsibility necessary to gain the freedom you may want. I think what I've noticed is when you want to be in a new state, specifically here talking about freedom, you have to embody the characteristics internally before you can actually achieve that external state, right? So if you want to be a free person, you need to operate as someone who has clarity on their goals, someone who has personal responsibility for the actions that they take on a day-to-day -day basis, someone who can have discipline to do things when no one else is telling them to do them. That's one of the big things with my course um, that I have really held to some people within the course or, or who have inquired about it have said, you know, do you have assignments to help me finish my screenplay? And I was like, essentially, no. What I have is the method that I believe you should follow and the mindset you should follow to finish a first draft if you're struggling to actually finish your feature length screenplay. But I am not here to tell you to turn in something at a specific date. You have to set your own deadlines. I'll help you keep I'll keep, I'll help keep you accountable for those deadlines, but you have to set those deadlines because if you don't take responsibility for your work, it doesn't matter if you finish or not. It's not even about finishing as much as it is the responsibility element. If you're in film school right now and you've only written when professors tell you to write, then you're not a writer yet. You have to write of your own volition and take responsibility for your own learning because when you leave film school, guess how many people are going to be telling you to write and finish assignments. Zero people. Nobody cares what you do once you finish school, right? Nobody's giving you assignments. Nobody's telling you what to do. People try to assume that they can 
leave school, maybe they have something sellable and then they can sell something to a production company or something. And then that production company will tell them what to write and what deadlines for the rest of their career. But it just doesn't work like that. You have to take responsibility for your own writing. And until you do so, you're not going to be moving forward. So I hope that's helpful. Um, you know, and I think what's good about writing and good about screenwriting is that like it isn't right now if you don't really feel like you have that freedom you can find that discipline and responsibility helps you build more freedom into your life right because it ultimately is coming back to you grabbing choice from other people around you and saying i choose i will choose what i do with my time i will choose where i spend my my evenings or my mornings and these are the goals that i have and i have gained clarity on therefore i will take the time that i have set aside to move towards them so that's a like writing screenplays and getting them finished is a great tool to build that side of yourself because if you can't build that responsibility and discipline side then you will never actually get freedom it's kind of this interesting kind of oxymoron where people assume freedom is being able to just play video games all the time whereas you really gain freedom when you gain responsibility and you gain ownership of your own of your own choices uh jocko willink is a is a retired navy seal and a speaker uh you may have heard of him maybe you've seen some of his podcast or some of his content on on youtube but one of the, that's one of the big things that he harps on is discipline equals freedom. Your ability to take ownership of your own choices creates your own freedom. So if you are in a state where you feel like you don't have freedom, ask yourself first, am I taking responsibility for the choices I make on a day-to-day-to-day basis? Have I set out clarity on where I want to go? Or am I just, do I have these abstract kind of out there five-year out goals or or maybe even it's maybe it's not even that clear um that i think is what you should focus on and you should say okay what would i like things to be a year from now and then work back from there okay and realize okay so then every month i probably need to do this which means on the week basis i need to do this so days should probably look like this which means today i need to be doing what and then you reverse engineer it. And if you do that for a year, I guarantee that the freedom you feel in your life will skyrocket. So hopefully that's helpful for you. If you want to listen to episode 40, you can do so right now. That episode is about spending time in silence. And I will see you guys next week. <laughs>